Trussell back with Gwinnett Lawns in beautiful. Oh boy. And rainy and cold. Atlanta, Georgia. Today is December the 9th, 2023. And on today's video, uh, what I want to do is hopefully a little bit more concise than I did on the last video about why you should not be using or utilizing these valves on your Kawasaki engine to change the oil. So this valve right here came off my other trim star. Now this is a some type of a plastic composite valve. Uh, it is the identical valve to this right here. Okay. The only difference is I cut this nipple off so that I could unscrew the valve and I replaced it with a factory Kawasaki plug. So you're probably wondering, why did I do that? Well, this is the reason. Over time, the more that you use these valves and the heat uh, cycles that the engine goes through, heating up, cooling down, heating up, cooling down, causes these to leak. Now, I'm gonna take this apart for you in just a minute, but I was getting a very tiny amount of leakage because of this. And because of the nature of this, that it is plastic, you can't, really crank down on it real hard to try to get it to stop leaking. Uh, there is an o-ring there on the threads and there's also an o-ring inside here which I'll show you. Uh, but the problem is on the older Kawasaki engines these valves that are on here were metal. They were silver in color. Uh, I don't know why they stopped using them other than they cost more. Those valves are okay. You know, uh, I never had a problem with them leaking. However, I don't think that having these plastic valves on there is a good idea. So by removing this out of the equation, you have one less failure point for the engine. Now here's the problem. If you're not super, super, super diligent in checking your oil every single day that you run your mower, which a lot of people don't do that. If you have a leak and you can't visibly see it, because you happen to look down there and this engine runs out of oil and overheats these engines are like twenty one hundred dollars this one this is the fs 600 they're like 18 to twenty one hundred dollars plus labor to replace them so you don't want you want to do everything possible to keep these engines going these engines will last thousands of hours if you keep really good oil in there keep the oil and filter changed keep the air cleaner uh, clean and, and the air filter serviced regularly these engines will last 3,000 4,000 5,000 hours or more okay so with that being said uh, I'm going to do an oil change on this mower and I'm not going to use this valve so how am I going to do the oil change I will show you that next so I ran the engine for about uh, 15 minutes and got the oil nice and hot this is a mighty might extractor I've had this thing for about 20 years it's got uh, a long hose. There are, um, I've got two hoses connected to this one, the, the large main hose and then the smaller hose. And uh, I have a variety of hoses up there on the wall that it comes with. I've had this thing probably more than 20 years and it's, I use it for doing this. I use it for extracting fluid out of power steering reservoirs, brake fluid reservoirs, you name it. I use this thing all the time. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I've got the mower this side. I just got it on a little two by four. Uh, you don't have to do that. Normally, if it was not raining outside, I would just put the uh, that side wheel on here and have the other side down. It's only about, uh, I don't know, less than an inch. It's just enough to get the uh, engine tilted over slightly, just a tiny little bit. So uh, let me switch to the other tripod and I'll show you exactly how easy this is. So you simply uh, just remove the dipstick. I'm gonna wipe this off. And then I'm gonna take the uh, plastic tube here. I'm just gonna wipe it off with a paper towel to make sure there's nothing in there. I'm just gonna stick this all the way down. It's in the bottom of the crankcase now. And I'm just gonna pump uh, the handle right here. You can see the oil going in there right now. These engines hold two quarts. This specific engine, this is a Kawasaki, 
is the FS 600V. Uh, most of them they hold about two uh, two quarts. So one good thing about this is that you will be able to get more of the old oil out of the engine if you do it this way than if you were to use this anyway. Even if you had uh, some of these engines that will have, especially if it's on a sit down zero turn and there's not a lot of room over here, you will have the um, hose set up that's got a little clip that, you know, it's got a valve in it and you can lean it down. Um, the problem is that, and I'm, to try to explain this, there is, if you can, you can't really see, but there, this is, this valve is a little higher than the bottom of the, of the crankcase, so you can't get all the oil out. And there's not a lot left in there, maybe a couple ounces. But this is going all the way to the bottom of the crankcase, so you will be able to get more of the oil out than if you use this anyway. So uh, I'm gonna let this drain or uh, continue to evacuate. It's filling up and uh, once we get to two quarts, uh, we'll come back and I'll show you what's next. All right, so I've got my uh, paper towels and I've got a pig pad under here and I've got my uh, little catch quart that I uh, cut out to make this a little easier. I'm just gonna spin the filter off real quick. And that's it. I'm gonna cut this filter open for you guys. But I just took a quart, quart oil bottle and cut the, uh, I think about two thirds of it out. Left it about an inch here and it's, I cut it out enough to slide under this, this lip right here. But it's just, it makes this so much easier and so much less mess. Now, if you've got a different mower that doesn't have this much room, you probably can't use this, but these pig pads, they're called pig pad, P-I-G. They're designed for uh, oil spills and stuff. Working on things just like this, and they're phenomenal. They just suck up the oil immediately. So, all right, well, I'm going to put the old, uh, or put the new filter back on, and then we'll cut this one open, and I'm going to actually... We're going to look down inside this uh, engine the, with a boroscope and see what kind of oil residue that we have left in there. All right, so I uh, want to show you these pig pads real fast. Not a single drop of oil was spilled on the mower. Uh, if you'll put it right under like a, almost like your uh, cradle with your hand. And I've got a magnet back on here. We will cut open the other filter. This, this oil and filter only have... I haven't used this mower 7.8 hours on it so you're supposed to change it at five uh, I just idle it every day um, again this is just a backup mower so <clears throat> but anyway uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take this is a boroscope and uh, hopefully this will be able to pick up I'm going to put this in the dipstick tube See if I can do this where the camera can pick it up. Whoops. So it's just a camera on the end. Now you see, there's a little tiny bit of oil residue. Those, um, these right here are baffles. That is the oil sump. I'm going to say there's probably half an ounce of oil in there. Uh, if you can see right here. That is, let me see if I can turn this around. There you go. That is the actual drain plug or the that valve I was talking about. It's really hard to see with the doing it with the GoPro, but the height at which the oil would drain into the valve is much lower now that I extracted it. So there would probably, I don't know, maybe eight or nine ounces of oil left in there if you drain it through the valve versus if you get the extractor, maybe there's an ounce or two left. 
I also want to show you guys this. This thing is phenomenal for taking off oil filters that you can't get the regular strap on. You have to be very careful. This is a pressure sensor, oil pressure. And if you use a strap wrench, which is what I used to use, or you try to use your hand, it's very hard to turn this. But this will, um, whether you're loosening it or you can use it tightening it, um, these three arms right here grip onto this. I use this also on the Isuzu because the filter is so close to the oil pan, I cannot get my, my hand in there to turn it. And it's really close. It's like half an inch away from the pan and it's in a curved area. So this is super, super helpful to get the, that oil filter off. All right, well, uh, let's get the uh, oil filter cut open and see if there's anything inside of it we need to be concerned about. All right, so here's my trusty oil filter cutter. It's got a cutting, very sharp cutting wheel right here. I'm going to open it until it will go over the entire circumference. And then I'm just going to spin this around, and I'm turning the handle maybe an eighth of a turn every revolution. And it will, whoops, it will slowly put pressure on that cutting wheel. And it's cutting into the case or the can of the filter. Okay, you can hear it starting to break through. It's just getting slippery. I can't hold on to it. pops off just like that all right so that's the top of it okay here's the anti-drain back valve this I believe is made out of silicone here's the filter itself that's what we're going to be looking at there's the bypass valve and then let's look and see if after seven hours there's any okay so you see that in the bottom hopefully the light is showing see that right there that's where the magnet was now it is completely normal to have uh, some metallic particles small obviously we're looking for chunks but they're when an engine is brand new and it's breaking in, you are going to have some particles. So what we're going to do now is take this. This is a pretty good quality filter you see in here. This is metal. It's got metal end caps. And what I'm doing is I'm looking between the pleats here and trying to see. That's a little bit of glue that holds the end caps to the pleats. But I'm looking in between here to see if I see any chunks of metal. That would be bad. Or anything that's really sparkle, sparkly. But I don't see anything. I prefer the Wix filters over the Kawasaki ones. Uh, because it seems like their filter media, the pleats, are a little bit better at catching. I don't know what the exact micron rating is, but you can see... This is why this is why you need to change your oil, okay? And this is why you need to run a magnet on the side of every oil filter that you have. Um, this right here, the magnet that's on this filter, is like a 300 pound pull magnet. If I was to take this magnet and stick it directly to the trim star, it would be extremely difficult. It would take about 300 pounds of force for me to lift it back off. So. Putting a magnet on your filter, I have them on every car, every mower, everything that has an oil filter, I put it on there. And it just catches the uh, metallic particles, mostly it's iron, that would normally pass through the filter media, and that causes wear. So why not uh, use a magnet and decrease your engine wear? 
All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put two quarts of oil in here. Normally, I use the Amsoil 2050, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna put in this mower next. So normally, this is the oil that I use, and this is also the oil that I use in the hydros. This oil is phenomenal. It is really, really, really good. It's 100% synthetic oil. It's a group four base stock. It's actually made in the lab, so it doesn't come out of the ground. Phenomenal oil. I tested, I did some lab analysis tests, meaning that I ran different oils, not in this engine, but my other trim star. I used the Valvoline uh, 20 VR1 racing oil in the silver bottle, okay? It's a little bit cheaper than this. It's conventional oil. It's not even synthetic oil. And to my surprise, the oil analysis came out as good as it was running the Amsoil. So this is the oil I'm going to be trying. Uh, I've got it in my other trim store, and I'm going to be uh, running it in this one. And I will do an oil analysis, and I'm going to do a video to show all three of the different oils and how they're performing. But this oil is an actual full synthetic. It's a little bit under as far as the quality of this, but if the results are any... Uh, from the conventional oil that Valvoline has, they should be at least as good or better with this oil. Um, this oil is a little bit more expensive than the conventional Valvoline, but it's cheaper than the Amsoil. By, I don't know, maybe $2 a quart. But anyway, this oil is phenomenal for air-cooled engines. So that's what I'm running, and I will, as I said, I will do a, uh, a video on the oil analysis and it's funny because I didn't realize it at first but this oil is not amber colored it's blue so um, now you can't tell I got purple gloves on but yeah this this oil is above a blue oil all right so here is the valve and again you've got the uh, o-ring this is what screws into the engine block and you've got an o-ring here and normally, of course, you're going to have the nipple. It will be sitting like this, and the nipple will be coming out about uh, half an inch. And you would loosen this inner part right here. And as you did that, the oil would start to flow out of the engine, down the nipple, and then hopefully you've got a uh, like a hose hooked up to this. But if you take this all the way out, okay, oil is going to pour out of here. But look how dirty this is. Um, and you have an O-ring here as well as well that seals inside of the valve itself. So you could, after draining the oil, pull this completely out and clean this. Um, but again, you know, the part of the problem is that this is plastic. Now, while this is a robust plastic, it is basically getting uh, coming up to the same temperature as the engine. So I prefer to have a metal valve there. I know that there will be probably people that say they've never had a problem with these, and that's fine. Uh, I'm all about mitigating the uh, potential risk because if this leaks and you don't notice it and you're out running your engine... And it's leaking enough, you could potentially seize the engine all because of this plastic valve. So this is the uh, the valve replacement plug. All right, so if you take this out and you want to do your oil change the way I'm showing you to do it, you can just freeze this. And um, if you can't read that, the looks like the part number is 920660774. Please verify with your dealer that this is the correct plug. Uh, this is a rather large, uh, I know that they changed this, um, the threads. On some of the older engines, the threads are different than this. This is a unique thread. You can't find this plug anywhere else. Uh, it's like, a, I'm sure Kawasaki did that on purpose. But some of the engines that they use these in, uh, other applications besides mowers would have this plug in there uh, instead of uh, this valve. You know, it could be, these these engines are mounted horizontal, but they could be vertical, like in 
an application like a pressure washer or um, a, gener a gen set or you know there's a myriad of other uses for these things and you may not want to drain the oil that way but I believe on the bottom there's also a plug don't hold me to that but you have to have a way to get the, uh, the oil out and I think the extraction method so I will put a link to the uh, Mighty Might extractor that I used. I'll put a link to the oil filter opener. I'll put a link to the oil filter wrench that I use and also to this oil. I get this oil off of Amazon. It's the best price I've found. It comes in a case of six. So that'll get you three oil changes. Because uh, most of these most of these mid-range Kawasaki air-cooled engines have, they hold two quarts if you're doing the filter as well. So. Um, yeah, if you want to, if you want to do what I'm doing for engine longevity, that is my primary goal is engine longevity. Hopefully on my other trim star, I'm going to see if I can get at least 5,000 hours out of that engine. So that's my goal. And I think it's almost nine, uh, 850 or something, but anyway, we got a ways to go. So hopefully if this video helped you, uh, just leave a comment. Let me know, uh, how you're changing your oil in your mower. Are you even changing it? Kawasaki recommends 100 hours for the oil and filter change, and uh, that's what I'm doing. So uh, thank you guys for watching the video, and I will see you on the next one.